A Lover's Betrayal, The Michael Day's Murder Story Is it always a good thing to let someone move into your home that you know? Hmm, I don't think so. There is a saying that you never know someone until you live with them. This is a story about a woman named Pamela Lawson. She was having issues in her marriage and didn't have a job or any resources to get out of it. One day, she ran into an old friend, Michael Days, at the store while out shopping. She was talking to Michael and telling him about the personal issues she was having at home. So, being the good man that he is, Michael offered her to stay at his place. Michael also needed help with his disabled child, so he thought they could both help each other. Pam had two kids as well, and Michael would pay all the bills while Pam took care of the house. He was doing this to help a friend out, and he was not looking for a relationship in the beginning. But after a while of living together, Pam and Michael started dating. This was in 2014. Michael Days was born May the 16th, 1983 in Cleveland, Ohio. He was the youngest of two boys. He was loving, caring, outgoing, a very nice man according to his aunt. Michael's brother was savagely murdered when he was 16 years old. Michael had many childhood friends, some of whom he would call his good brothers. He believed in being a family man and met a young woman early in his adult life. And in 2008, Michael would then become a father to a baby girl of his own. The child's mom could not handle the fact that her daughter was disabled. So Michael stepped up to the plate to be a full-time father by taking custody of his little girl. Meanwhile, the relationship between Michael and Pam started to become rocky. Michael was unhappy with Pam and started to complain to his co-workers about their relationship. After Pam found out Michael had been cheating, that's when the conspiracy to murder Michael started. She met this young man by the name of LeKev Spivey at the dollar store. Spivey was in a relationship with another woman with whom he shared a child. Pam and Spivey began an intimate relationship. As the plot thickens, Pam and Spivey started setting the scene for this tragic murder. Spivey started sending text messages to Pam asking her what she wanted him to do to Michael. On November 12, 2014, Michael was tragically killed by LeKev Spivey. Here is the 911 call Pam made after Michael was shot in their home. Somebody just came in and my boyfriend had a gun to my head. Is he breathing? I don't know. She seemed terrified very anxious for the uh, EMS to arrive. She's asking 911, what can she do? He still seems to be breathing. And so the dispatcher gives her some things to be doing to try to help him. They're giving her directions on how to perform um, CPR. She's trying to save her boyfriend. First responders quickly arrive to find 31-year-old Michael Days unconscious and bleeding. They found uh, Michael, uh, the victim of a gunshot wound, in the bathroom, laying across the floor. They pulled... Now, this sounds so fake. She was trying to make it seem believable to the authorities. A local mechanic who saw a red car during the time Michael was murdered gave the detectives a tip. This mechanic provided full details of what he saw before the murder. And what he told the detectives was exactly what some cameras picked up as well. But they were too blurry to determine the license plate on the car the killer fled in. Then, after receiving this information, the detectives started their investigation into Pam. They subpoenaed Pam and LeKev's phone records and were shocked at what they found. Later, 
They received a second call saying that Pam was loading boxes on the back of a pickup truck and moving out the home she once shared with Michael. It was the mechanic and he also stated that the same car he saw at the home before the murder was back at the scene of the crime that day. After two weeks of chasing down leads, Cleveland police have a new suspect in the murder of Michael Days, a 23-year-old man named Lekev Spivey. His vehicle was at the house when Michael was killed, but it's still unclear what their connection was. Lekev Spivey, from all appearances, has a pristine record. He has absolutely no criminal involvement whatsoever. He's fairly young, and there is nothing to indicate that he has any history of violence. He hasn't been arrested for anything. I don't think he had a, a, a traffic ticket. So they're wondering if this 23-year-old kid, uh, how, how could he be involved? Is, is he likely a candidate to commit a murder? Lekev worked at a local dollar store. He had a fiance and a young baby that he was supporting. They went and approached him at the dollar store and questioned him about his connection with this Chevy Malibu. Police are surprised to learn that someone else involved in the case also works there. During the initial interview, he denied ever knowing Michael Day, but he did tell the police he knew Pam. Pam actually, after the homicide, had gotten a job at the dollar store. Plus, she had shopped there, so he had interacted with Pamela at the store. Although LeKev Spivey worked with Pamela at the local dollar store, he told police that he really didn't know her. What he knew about the case was simply that she had told him that her boyfriend had been shot. LeKev claims the Malibu couldn't have been his because he was halfway across town at the time. When detectives check on his alibi, it doesn't hold up. LeKev told the police that he had never been on West 46th Street that he, in fact, had been to the Plasma Center around that time and that they could check the records. Well, of course, they quickly checked that out and found out he was not at the Plasma Center. The detectives then confront Lekev with the video and the information that his car was at the scene of uh, Michael's house when Michael was murdered and that it had returned at least one time after that. He starts to sweat and he comes forward with a little bit more information about uh, his relationship with Pamela. After the homicide, she went to LeKev Spivey and she asked him if he could help get her a job because she needed to support her children. And so he was instrumental then in getting her a job after the fact. And so she did get a job at the dollar store. Police get a hold of LeKev and Pamela's phone records and discover their relationship is a lot closer than what LeKev had previously claimed. When the detectives get the results, they realize that there is some sexual activity going on between the two. Police find numerous texts between himself and Pamela, which uh, disputed his claim that he barely knew her. It further reveals that there possibly may be something there that ties Pamela in a little bit more deeply to this homicide than she has led us to believe. The phone records also show that Pamela messaged Lekev just moments before Michael was murdered. Pamela is telling LeKev that there is a gun in her car. He goes and he looks and texts Pamela and says, I don't see it, where is it? She says, it's in the front, it's underneath, I believe a jacket or a purse. And then he gets out of the car again and reaches into the car. LeKev asks Pamela, what do you want me to do? Should I rough him up? And Pamela responds in a text, I don't care, shoot him if you want. That kind of evidence is, is almost the last nail in the coffin. They've made a plan to assault Michael. They're discussing this, and very shortly thereafter, that's exactly what happens. There's obviously enough evidence to seek warrants for Pamela and for LeKev, uh, go out and arrest them and bring them in for another round of questioning. Right off the bat, she's denying everything. Then she gets presented with the uh, text messages, and she realizes that. They requested warrants for Pam and Spivey for the murder of Michael Days and they brought Pam into the police station for questioning. She denied all the allegations against her, and this is what she had to say about the incident. He told me that he could beat him up for me, but it wasn't going to be that day. He could do it another day because he had to go to school and he was at the plasma center. And I said, okay, 
I get a knock at the door, somebody asks for my, and that's when it happened. Pamela claims that when she opened the door, she was surprised to see that Lekev brought a gun. I felt the cold of the gun in the back of my head. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. He heard my say who it is, and he went into the bathroom. And that's when I like, told myself I was shaking. He told Mike to shut up, and that's when he shot me. Like that. Just like that. Now let's listen to the calf side of what happened in his story. Oh, then she comes to him and says, you know, I can't take it anymore. Can you help me out and beat him up and stuff? And, you know, if you happen to shoot him, you shoot him. Lekev says he agreed to do it. And Pamela set everything up for the day of the shooting. So she texted you that morning? Mm -hmm. Okay, and how, what kind of information is being uh, exchanged between you two? Well, she told me basically some of what he looked like, tomorrow, black dude with dreads and stuff, kind of tall. And she told me also that uh, the guy would be in the car when you get here. She was like, yeah, he in the bathroom. I'm like, all right, I'm in. She was like, yeah. So I get in inside the house, she shut the door, and she was just like, just grab the guy and just put it to my head. Pretending to be a hostage, Pamela led him to the bathroom where Michael was cleaning up. I was so nervous and scared that my body just shook. Like I just tensed up and my finger pulled the trigger. And then before I knew I was hearing a loud ring in my ear. And next thing I know, I looked at him, he leaning over in the tub. I'm like, oh, I gotta go. And I just left. Now here's my take on this case. Pam's ultimate betrayal. She murdered the man who had taken in not only her, but also her children. After Michael fed you and your kids, he gave you all a roof over your heads. And this is how you repay him? This is one trifling heifer, and she was very self-centered. She was living in his house and did not have to pay anything. And because she found out he was cheating, you go, and cheat as well? Two wrongs don't make a right. This was one crazy woman who had no sense. Now she's away from her children. She has to do a 33 year sentence. Who knows what will happen in 33 years of doing a bid? Okay, I have questions. Lekev, what were you thinking about? to go and murder a man for a woman you barely knew. And on top of that, you were in a whole relationship with another woman. This was plain stupid. Did you think about your baby? By the way, Lekev was given a 28 year sentence for his role in this murder. Pam, was it worth it? In the end, and in my opinion, no. Pam, why didn't you just leave Michael House if you were so unhappy? No one would have stopped you from leaving. You are a master manipulator at getting men to take care of your sorry butt and doing your evil deeds. You waited until Michael died to get your butt a damn job. You should have done that in the beginning right after you left your husband and came to Michael's house. Finally, let's hear what Michael's aunt, Bertha Clark, had to say in her own words. It was a moment of relief somewhat because at least now we know who did it. We felt like they should never have options of a parole or to ever step foot outside of a prison. But still, at the same time, we were happy. They down where they supposed to be. Affairs. As we have come to the end of this video, stay tuned for more crimes in the U.S. and all over the world. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the Crimes in Candyland channel.